This is my Arduino based drone project. The only thing is that the code that runs inside is a platform called MultiWi. In this video series, I want to show you how to create your own flight controller code for drones and make this project 100% own made. So let's get started. <laughs> What's up my friends, welcome back! In a past video tutorial series, we have built an Arduino based drone. The receiver and transmitter both work with Arduino and NRF24 radio module connection. The flight controller is also made using Arduino, but it uses the MultiWi platform. Back then I've told you that we will create our own flight controller code in future videos. That is exactly what we will do here. I want to divide this part of the tutorial in a few videos. First, we will see how to read signals from a commercial radio control receiver. Next, we have to understand how the PID control works. We have already done this for one axis. Watch that video to learn more about PID. Now, we have to apply that same concept on two axes for a four-motor drone. Finally, we should adjust the parameters and make our first flight test using our own code. Once it flies ok, we could always improve the code, add more sensors and make the drone better. Ok, so in this part of the video, we will have a basic introduction of the parts of the drone and we will start receiving data from the radio controller. The drone is 3D printed. The STL files are below ready to download. I've used PLA material to print the drone with a 20% infill and two perimeters. My Annette E10 printer have done a very good job. You will also need a radio transmitter and PWM receiver. Four brushless motors. These are 18mm diameter brushless motors. For a 250 size drone are perfect. I've used 12 amperes electronic speed controllers, one Arduino Nano, the MPU 6050 IMU and the 8010 radio controller with the R12DS receiver. You could use any other PWM output radio controller. You will also need a LiPo battery propellers, wires and maybe a switch. Ok, so let's begin. We could jump over the drone build part, since we already done that in a past video. You have the link for that video in the description below. I will only center on the flight controller part of the drone. First of all, this is the full schematic of this tutorial. Motors are connected to the ESCs and the ESCs to signal pins 4, 5, 6 and 7 from port D of the Arduino. We will have to create a PWM signal to these pins in order to control the motors. The IMU module connected to I2C pins of the microcontroller A4 and A5 and the four input channels from the receiver to pins 8, 9, 10 and 12 from port B. Today, we will work with these last four pins. First of all, let's take a look on how the PWM signal that the receiver gives us looks. I've powered the receiver applying 5 volts to it. Turn on the transmitter and connected one signal pin to the oscilloscope. As you can see, I've got a pulse width modulated signal. The pulse width of radio controllers usually goes from 1000 to 2000 microseconds, as we can see here. The frequency is usually in range from 40 to 200 Hz. In this case, we have 67 Hz, which is a common value. So, we have to connect this signal to the Arduino and read the 1000 to 2000 value. So, how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's share ground and 5 volts with the receiver and connect channel 1 to pin 8 of the Arduino Uno for the test. The code will work the same in case of an Arduino Nano. 
we could use the pulsing function to measure the pulse width. But that it's not the best solution, because in a flight controller code, the main issue is timing. At the same time that we read the receiver PWM values, we have to read the IMU data and calculate the PAD values and also write a signal for each of the four ESCs. Those processes require a lot of process time. So, in order to not interfere and create timing issues, we should use interruptions. In this case, pin state interruptions. This will interrupt the main loop each time that the selected pin will change its state from high to low, low to high or both. Ok, so we activate state change interrupt for pin 8 adding this line to the code. Pins 8 to 13 of the Arduino that uses at Mega 328 chip, which are Nano, Uno and Pro Mini, correspond to port register B. Now each time that the signal at this input change, we will go to the interrupt service routine, or ISR. Here, we take a first measurement of the elapsed time, and when the second change will occur, we count the time once again and subtract the first value in order to obtain the pulse width. Imagine this, the first value of the pin is low. On the rising edge, we enter the interruption and obtain the first time value. After a while, on the falling edge, we enter the interruption again and obtain the second time value. The difference between those two time values is the actual time width of the pulse. So that easy we obtain the input value. I start a serial communication and print the value on the monitor. Upload this example to the Arduino. Connect the receiver to digital pin 8 and open the monitor. As you can see, when I move the joystick of channel 1, the value changes in range from 1000 to 2000. Ok, so now we should do the same for the 4 channels. I will name these channels input yaw, input pitch, input roll and input throttle. Ok, but now each of these pins could create an interruption. So for that, we should first check on which pin the change was made. Using the pin port registers, we check if each of the pin is high or low, and at the same time if the last state was high or low. Knowing both the last and present state of the input, we could detect state changes on each pin and only take the time measurement when that changes occur. So there you go, we have the time width of each channel measured. If your radio controller does not send 1000 to 2000 pulse and you are not able to configure it, then you should map these values to a range between 1000 and 2000 or 0 to 1000 using the map function. We need this exact range because in future parts of the tutorial we have to write a PWM signal to the ESCs of the motors with the same range in order to spin the motors, where 1000 is no movement and 2000 is full throttle. Ok, so as a recap of this first part, we first define our variables for each channel, for the time count and a few more variables that we will use. Next. Define the configuration of the input pins in the setup loop, in order to activate the interruption triggering. The interruption routine is defined separated of the main loop, with the vector corresponding to the interruptions created by the pins that we have selected, and in the main loop the only thing that we do in this example is print the values on the serial monitor. We will have to delete those lines on the final code and add the remaining parts. Well, in the next part we will read the data of the IMU and create the PAD control for 4 motors using both gyro and acceleration data. I think it is better to divide this project in a few videos. So stay tuned for the next part. At this moment all we have done is receive values from the radio controller. I hope that you enjoyed this part of the tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. If you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. 
Thanks again and see you later guys.